What do you like most about Singapore? It's clean, it's safe, and it's food. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't want to be like this uh, blogger number 1000. Meet Max Chernoff. Born in Russia and having lived in seven countries, he chose Singapore as his home five years ago. But has Singapore chosen him back? We'll find out in this video. We'll also discuss how he became Kiasu after living here, why foreigners choose to live in an expat bubble in Singapore, and what's the status of his PR application. I'm Max. Um, and he's also Max. Uh, enjoy. It's easy to feel home and it feels easy to integrate here in the society with other people. Because maybe some people not realize it, but let's say you're from the UK. So you probably don't get it, but maybe you do because you, you travel a lot, you live in many places. But when people, let's say from other cultures, other backgrounds, they come, they, they move to, to the UK. Because UK culture and history and background so deep, and so mm -hmm. rich, you cannot stay, if you want to be part of the society, you cannot just stay like Russian in the UK or like wherever, Italian. You will absorb and you will, you will need to like change because the culture is like the majority of people in the UK, they're British. And then the culture is so rich, you cannot live in a bubble, definitely, I think. You can, some people live in a bubble, but it's, what's the point to live in a bubble? Like yeah, only. then you're not really experiencing the UK. In France, it's also the case. You will become French after like 10 years of living, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing. I mean, some people want it. But in Singapore, because it's relatively young, country. There is a variety of different backgrounds of different people. So there is not this, like, let's say, push of one major predominant culture in Singapore that you need to adapt and live. Even in the US, US like it's a melting pot, but you definitely become Americanized because also the culture is, is pretty strong. I don't, I'm not saying that in Singapore the culture is not strong, but it's more acceptive and it's more variety because of different people. And there are a lot of expats. I'm kind of, I have friends, local friends, Singaporeans, I have expat friends, but in Singapore, you definitely can live in a bubble, 100%. There are 40,000 British here, something like that, plus minus. 40,000 US, 40,000 French, even like Russian speaking is like 10,000. You can find like your bubble living here. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you have that you you should do it, but you definitely can do it. So Singapore is much easier place to get integrated. Is there anything that frustrates you? That you, if you had a magic wand, you would like to change? <laughs> I live quite central and the sidewalks are super narrow. It's like near the interlace, the sidewalk, two meters maybe, two meters wide, something like that. And then next to the sidewalk is another like eight meters of green grass. <laughs> It's super nice to have this green grass and I completely understand guys, I like <laughs> there is not enough space in Singapore and so on. I understand it. I'm not the architect, I'm not urbanist guy, but it's like, why wouldn't you have like three meters of sidewalk and then seven meters of, of greenery? What I'm hearing is that you have a wide push chair for your children. Yeah. <laughs> Was there anything that kind of surprised you when you first arrived in Singapore or, or maybe until today? One thing I remember, I'm on MRT inside the carriage and I feel like gigantic compared to other people, compared to locals, compared to most of the people, because mm -hmm. I'm 190, it's like six foot, six four. I don't know, I didn't have this feeling taking the metro in Moscow, let's say, or in London. But in Singapore, it was like, oh, I'm so tall. <laughs> I was uncomfortable. Now I like completely used to it. Sometimes I'm just, uh, I'm worried when I talk to some Dutch guy who is like two meters high, and I was like, oh yeah. You are, man, you're so tall. <laughs> but like, that was kind of feeling. Since your time in Singapore, what's the weirdest thing that's happened? Some cringe thing happened to me in the beginning. It's a, like this cultural difference thing. When you come to Singapore, you kind of don't know 100% of like how the society is structured, like in the backgrounds, ethnicities, how they're structured. You kind of read in the Wikipedia how it is, but I remember this cringe moment when you meet some like Indian looking people and you like start chatting and then they're like, Hey, and how long have you been in Singapore? And you're like, yeah, we're Singaporeans. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it. It happened with me like a couple of times in the beginning, like our first year in Singapore. Well, exactly that happened to me actually earlier today. I walked into a supermarket, shout out to Sheng Song. A guy grabbed me as I went in <coughs> and he said, are you Singaporean? Are you PR? I'd never thought of that before. I could actually be Singaporean because anybody yeah. be Singaporean and yeah. it's easy to forget that. Yeah, that's true, that's true. I know a bunch of people, like Caucasian looking people, they, mm -hmm. and they are Singaporean passport holders. Your wife, how does she feel about living in Singapore? We like both of us, we lived in many places, many countries. So as I mentioned, I lived in, in Russia, obviously, in the UK, in the US, total maybe a year, in France, in Ireland, a bit in Spain, and I traveled a lot. So I kind of knew 
what I want and my wife as well. She loves the place. It's a psychological thing. You always explain to yourself that you made the right choice. It's like you buy this car and then you kind of, you're still checking the reviews and like, yeah, yeah, that was the right decision. Yeah, I made the right decision. I think we are like, Objective. Only people are subjective anyway, like more biased in a way. We went to like a road trip a year and a half ago in, in Europe. So we traveled Switzerland, France and Italy. We met a lot of like, our friends who settled down in, in Europe. We always like trying to think, oh, would we live here in Geneva? Would we live in Zurich? Would we live in Rome? And like, no, Singapore is the perfect place for us. I mean, it's nice to, let's say Rome, it's nice to visit Rome as a tourist, but not to live there. Do you hold permanent residence, PR? We applied for it. Uh, we got rejected like a mm. couple of months ago. That's the game in Singapore, I think. I mean, we're still like big fans of Singapore. Like we like the place. Uh, it's just, you maybe kind of feel more stable if you're mm -hmm. not on a temporary visa, but you're on a like a PR permanent residence status. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's okay. So do you get any feedback as to why you haven't been successful on this occasion? No, they don't say. There are like criteria which like any agency would explain to you. You need to make as much money as possible, like money, investments, be integrated into society, do some volunteering. Education also helps the higher degree. Um, recommendations from like locals. We've done everything. Like we have a lot of local friends, so we've done recommendations. Also like this channel, I kind of, I think we actually like helping community through this channel because closing this gap between locals and foreigners. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, uh, but I mean, I don't know, it's like a black box. Some people say the more clear rules would help, but for me it's like, okay, that's the that's the Singapore rules. It's not me who will judge it. it's yeah. the rules or they're right or wrong. I play the rules because I come to this mm -hmm. country. So it's like, if I don't get a PR, I mean, it's okay. Let's see what goes next. You've lived all over in lots of different countries, but I get the sense, potentially, that Singapore is a more longer term. You're not just thinking about, well, you've been here five years already. So in an ideal world, where do you see your future? Actually here, I mean, I was always like, when I live somewhere, it was always something like in the back of my mind. Should I try something else? Mm -hmm. And only Singapore is like, it's just fade away. And it's like, yeah, this is this is my place. I love it. I love the people, I love the country, I love how things work here. I love the values of, uh, of this place. I would love to be here long term. I don't know what about Singapore, if it's like mutual. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, would, I would love to, to be here, like raise my kids here. And like, yeah. Some people say that Singapore is like Disneyland. Mm. or Sesame Street, mm. too, too easy, too nice. Mm. And in fact, some, I've met some foreigners that actually leave because they want their children to grow up in a more tough environment. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? I don't agree that Singapore is Disneyland. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it can get this feeling if you're a tourist and you just walk around the city center and that's only what you see. There's a lot of like different circles in Singapore, different things are going on in Singapore. It's a complex city, complex place, complex country. It's like a lot of things, a lot of different people. So I don't agree with that. It's very shallow view on Singapore, I think. About my kids, it's a, it's a good question. I feel like I would like my daughter, two daughters now. I would like them, I forgot about the second one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love if they experience living on their own, uh, let's say when they're like 18, 19, go to the study in the university, let's say in the UK, let's say London. I think London is like ultimate destination for the university. Yeah, and then they decide where they, if they wanna go back or they wanna start their career, like anywhere actually in mm -hmm. the world, it doesn't matter. But I think it's a good idea. I mean, I'm a big, big believer that you have to move out of, your, of the place where you were born and then try to live somewhere else. And for kids, I think here is perfect place to raise, to be, to have kids at school when they're growing up. But then to add up some maturity in them and their personalities, it's nice to if they live somewhere else. How easy did you find it to actually meet people, build up friendships arriving here? At some point we stayed for two months, we lived in the Canary Islands, the place called Gran Canaria, the city Las Palmas. And it's beautiful, beautiful. But after two months, I was like, oh, I kind of, missing the community and like mm -hmm. making friends and stuff. I think it's a big mistake to think that you're gonna go to beautiful like Portugal and live there like you buy a house next to the sea and you live there and just feel happy. Yeah, I feel happy but 
for most of the people, even like for introverts, like it's like a little bit like extrovert introvert thing. I don't like it, but people need to socialize. They want to socialize. They feel bad without socializing. Just introverts, extroverts, they need different kind of like mm -hmm. uh, different types of contacts. But in Singapore, as it's a big city with a variety of different people, it's very easy to to make friends. So I have. I have local friends as well, like, like a few local friends we play football with, we play spike ball with. Our good friends, they became Singaporeans. She is Filipino, he is Indian, mm -hmm. and, but she's been, they've been living in Singapore for like 20 years. They converted to Singaporeans, they are like very good friends. So we spent every Chinese New Year, we spent together with them. I looked at your, your headline on your YouTube channel yeah. and it's something about closing the gap between yeah. foreigners and Singapore. I, I might have that wrong. Um, yeah, locals and foreigners live in Singapore, yeah. so to, to get them together, mm -hmm. closer to each other. And do you actually feel that there is a big gap between locals and foreigners? Do you need to be driven by numbers? So we always like views, subscribers, conversions, this kind of things. The conversion from views to subscriber is pretty low. And I was like, oh, maybe like because I'm Angmo, maybe people don't trust me as much and that's why they don't subscribe. They watch and they're like, hmm, this uh, Angmo, I'm not sure if I want to subscribe. <laughs> maybe it's the case. I don't know. I think there is a gap. As I was saying, like you can live in the bubble. It's definitely possible in Singapore. My idea is, you know, if you're a foreigner and if you mingle with locals, it gets you brings you more rich experience living in the country and same for locals actually some locals feels like they're afraid of foreigners they're like oh this uh, rich for angmos yeah i'm not sure if i can trust them but i mean the world is different so it's it you you grow as a person if you interact with different kind of people i'm guessing there's a lot of people they're going to be wondering why on earth did you decide to start your youtube channel <laughs> <laughs> what possessed you I've been doing social media for a long time, for a few years, in Russian before. We did like agency things, so we help like individuals and companies to grow brands, grow personal brands, start Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, these kind of things. And in Singapore, I also want to do something here for local audience, like to contribute to local audience, mm -hmm. local society. I like to do something here. It makes sense, like if you're in Singapore, like why you're still working for other markets. And I know how YouTube works. I know this game, so it's a nice, combination of like creative part of me and like business part of me mm -hmm. and you can combine it like doing YouTube. I started this channel like two years ago, did some tests after actually around I think six weeks, five, six weeks, one video just blew up. It was, um, I remember this video, weird habits I adopted living in Singapore. And I remember my Singaporean friends, he WhatsApp me, hey dude, we just sharing your video in our like local chats, WhatsApp, WhatsApp groups. It's hilarious. It's like, oh, wow, <laughs> that's cool. So it was funny. I mean, it's, it was relatively easy to, mm -hmm. to start a channel in Singapore. But of course, we, I knew the game and then it took us a good amount of time to actually like get this channel like grow fast. Mm -hmm. Have there been any recording nightmares since you've started your channel? <laughs> There were like a couple of yeah, videos, I wouldn't say the names, <laughs> but yeah, like a couple of them, like one was a complete disaster. I asked a person a question and he answered some, some other question, not my question. <laughs> and it was like 20 times in a row. It was like, what's going on? I'm getting like crazy or what? Another one was just a person was not very talkative. We agreed the interview, he was fine, but then he Kind of, it didn't seem that he wanted to talk, but then it was one of our most successful videos. Oh, actually. really? Yeah. So it was really like concise and, and straight to the point. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you don't know what video will be popular. We have an eye. We kind of can predict what videos will do well, but sometimes it's like very unexpected. Okay, guys, if you want to start a YouTube channel to create a side passive income for you and your family, or maybe at some point you want to do it full time and make a living out of it like myself, then join an early bird list of my YouTube mastery. It's a 12 months coaching program where I will help you to start and grow your YouTube channel and make money out of it. Link is here. And now back to the video. What do you struggle with? What do you find challenging? I think the challenging part is this project, the YouTube project. I'm trying hard to make it work. It's already like, it's already doing good because I'm almost 40 and I have this, I'll be 39 in, in August. I have this feeling I want to keep up with life. I'm not kind of afraid to be 40 as some people, but it's always like in my mind that I want to do things faster and want to achieve more things faster. 
especially when you when I'm like almost 40 this kind of thing it's not like a huge thing that always making the quality of my life worse it's still like in the, in the end of my, my mind is this this kind of thing i wasn't png uh, before you were a marketer right and png yeah. are at the top of the marketing game and That's you were true, with yeah. gucci at the beginning mm. when gucci first went to png 2011 right as a brand yeah. manager wow that's that's a lot to step out. I'm not a spiritual guy. I'm more like uh, logical, like I like things based on science. But back then I was like, my dream, it was a big dream. And I kind of said to myself, I'm gonna end up in this company, like no matter what. So it was like huge motivation, uh, preparation and luck. So I ended up in PNG. And then after a few years, I was like, okay, I'm kind of bored. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do something like by my own. And that's how I started my, my project. What are you excited about in your life right now? I'm super excited about my second daughter. She was just born recently, less than a month ago. My older daughter is six and I see how she how she's taking care of her sister is like super cool to, 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 to see. The second one is like I'm super excited about doing YouTube and how it's evolving into the mm -hmm. like different projects now. I'm discussing with like people what business I, I could potentially launch in Singapore, like offline and online business. It's just I'm super fascinated how it's all going. It's totally my, my thing. I love YouTube. I think YouTube is a perfect uh, platform. It's better than TikTok, it's better than Instagram because like YouTube has it all. It's long format, it's short format, and it posts, you can post, like use your blogging skills. So I'm super excited about this. I try to be excited about life in general. If you had to live in one other country, not Russia, not Singapore, for a year, where would it be? Oh, definitely New York. I have a good American friend. He moved, unfortunately, he moved to Ireland, Dublin recently. <laughs> I miss him. Hey, Ryan, come back. We have this idea. So when we are like 60 or like maybe 55, 50 to 60, our kids are already grown up. We go there together, like both of our families. We go there, no kids, only us. Go to New York and spend there a year. Go to theaters, music festivals, everything. Think of a dog, you throw a tennis ball, that dog is chasing that ball. What is the one thing that you're constantly never letting go of, always going after? Happiness, happiness and joy in life. And happiness sometimes, if you're in a stage of life and you have like challenges in your life, it's okay, it doesn't mean that you're not going to happen. So it's like, the life is really, pretty up and down thing. And I had it a lot, especially if you're starting your own thing, it's like a lot of ups and downs. Internal like fulfillment and happiness and freedom as well. Freedom is a, is a big thing for me. Doing what I want to do, I want to spend my life with, just making friends with people that I like. This kind of freedom, I it's one of the biggest thing for me. Thanks for watching and let me know what topics do you want me to cover in the next video. And for now, join the early bird list of the YouTube Mastery program. See you.